Hey guys, we're gonna get started. Today, our lecture is Rabbits 911. Oh, and by the way, in case you don't know me, I apologize and introduce myself. I'm Dr. Stephanie Lamb. Um, I'm one of the newer associates here at Exotic Animal Care Center, and Kat asked me to come in and present these lecture series over this next year to all you guys. So, um, we have a nice list of different lectures that we are going to be talking about through this year. We already did our first one, our basic rabbit care, so today we're identifying and treating rabbit illnesses, but you can see we do have a nice list of other things that we're going to be talking about at our uh, lecture series coming up. <clears throat> so, to start off with our illness talk today, Working in a rabbit hospital, and specifically really an exotic animal hospital, it's not unusual for a person to come in with their pet and say, my rabbit, he was totally fine yesterday, everything was great, he wasn't showing any signs of illness, and today he's really sick and he's near death. So it's not unusual for people to come in with all of a sudden there's an illness, so they didn't notice anything going on beforehand. And you know, it's sometimes a little hard for people to understand that their, their pet can get into such a serious condition and then have not seen anything. And I always let people know, rabbits, along with other exotic pets that we have, your guinea pigs, chinchillas, you name it, you know, lots of other little animals, they are a prey species. And so as a prey species in the wild, they do not want to act like they're sick. Because if they act like they're sick, that's a signal for a predator to see them and say, ooh, you're going to be nice and easy to catch, I'm going to go after you. So rabbits really just try to act like everything's good, nothing's wrong, I feel great, until they get to a point where they just can't really compensate anymore. And then they start to show signs of illness. So today, what we're going to be going over is what can we look for in our rabbits to identify that they may be sick kind of before they get to that point where they're really, really ill coming into the hospital. But also trying to be able to look at our rabbits and say, okay, I know what normal is, so I can try to identify what abnormal is, um, and I know if I need to come into the hospital for a particular issue or not. Um, so what we're gonna learn today is a basic rabbit physical exam. So I'm gonna condense four years of veterinary school into <laughs> one hour for you guys <laughs> in this talk. Um, so we're going to try to hit on the, the key things that we need to look at in our rabbits to identify what's normal first so that we can say, okay, this is abnormal and this is a signal that I need to bring my little friend into the hospital. And then we're going to go over some basic nursing skills too because the thing is, is most animals um, we can't tell them to just take their pills and give themselves their medications. We have to do it for them. And so we do have to be a little bit of a nurse to our, our pets sometimes, even though we weren't expecting that when we got them as a pet. So we're going to start off with our basic physical exam. And when you bring your pet into the hospital, that's the first thing that we're always doing. We're doing our physical exam, and we're looking at your pet from head to toe. And we're looking at every different little thing on them so that we can see what is normal, what is abnormal. I like to start off with the face because it's easy to start with the front and work your way to the back. So even if you guys are coming in for you know, something wrong on the foot, I'm always starting off with that face first. And though I may seem as though I'm ignoring the foot, I'm really not, I'm just wait, making my way back there so that I don't miss something else. Because if I just go to the original, the problem that you're seeing, um, I could very well miss something else going on that may be even a little bit more serious than what they're coming in for. So starting off, um, I put up our little rabbit face up here, and the first thing that I'm always looking at is those eyes, and I'm looking at them together. Are they symmetrical? Meaning, when I look at you head on, are your little pupils kind of pointed at the same spots, or is one over here and one up there? Are they, you know, um, is one eye dilated and one's constricted? Is it that both of those eyes are kind of in the same location, or one eye seems to be bulging? Those kind of things are what I'm looking for. I'm then actually looking at the eye itself for any discharge. I'm looking for redness either on the lids of the eye um, or within any structure of the eye itself. And when I'm looking at the eye, I'm actually looking at several different structures within the eye. Um, so, but I want you guys at home to just kind of examine every little area and see does any portion look a little bit abnormal. You're also looking for swellings. You're looking to see if they're squinting, anything like that. 
The next place I'm going to is those ears. Um, looking down those ears, is there any debris down there? Is there any odor down there? I'll even kind of feel the base of the ear canal, like right down here on either side, and feel to see, does that feel nice and symmetrical, or can I feel like a big lump on one side, whereas the other side feels nice and flat? Because the way that these guys' ear canal is shaped, you can see down there a little bit, but you can only see so much. The ear canal actually comes down and kind of makes an L sort of shape. And so that L portion at the bottom, you're not going to be able to see any of that. You're going to have to actually be able to feel those ears and actually see if anything feels abnormal with them. Um, I'm feeling for, for heat, you know, to see if there is any evidence of some sort of inflammation going on with those ears. And the other thing about rabbits and their ears is, they don't always like their ears touched, so a lot of times you'll kind of look up that, that ear to kind of look inside and they kind of shake their head because they just don't want you messing mm -hmm. with it. But it's a good thing to just, you know, go home and work with your rabbits and get them used to kind of you looking them all over, looking at these different parts, and because then when they come into the hospital and this weird alien person is touching them all over and doing these different things with them, they've kind of felt that before. They've had that sort of experience of having someone kind of examine them all over and it's not as scary as if it were to be the very first time they've ever had something like that done. Um, so after those eyes, after those ears, I'm looking at that nose. And the nose, the biggest thing we're looking for is, is discharge. And yes, I'm kind of looking into the canals themselves, but I'm also really focusing on the fur around the nose. Because a rabbit, they really, they don't like stuff on their nose so much, you know, they get annoyed by it. So they may sneeze and then they clean it off right away. And you don't notice that there's any debris or anything like that, but what you can kind of be keyed into to recognize that maybe there is something going on with their respiratory passages is moisture. Does it look a little bit moist on the fur? Does it look like maybe there's a little bit of dried stuff at different portions on the fur right around the nose? You know, little things to just kind of to key into. And then the mouth. Um, one of the biggest issues that we see rabbits coming into the hospital for is gastrointestinal problems, and in particular problems caused by their teeth. Rabbits' teeth, unlike us, um, their teeth are constantly growing. And so they have their nice little incisors, but then they have their molars in the back. The incisors, you guys can see. You can flip your rabbit upside down and kind of look at those little pull the little cheeks apart and see those cute little incisors, but you're never going to see those molars in the back of the mouth. And so when they come into the hospital here, and I'll show you some pictures in a second, we actually use little scopes to actually go into that mouth, spread those cheeks open, push that tongue off the side, and actually see those teeth that are way back there. Because a lot of times if you're seeing drooling going on, and you just have all this kind of dry drool or actually wet drool around the mouth, it's because something's going on in that mouth and something can be going on with those molars. And we often have molar disease much more than we have incisor disease as a problem. Um, but since you guys can't see the incisors at home, I do want you to look at those incisors. Do they look symmetrical? Do some look like they're, you know, really long and off to the side? Does it look like the gums are at all red or irritated? Does it look like there's any pus at the gums? Because that's definitely something that we will see. So, going on to a couple of pictures of that mouth, there's your nice little incisors that you can see right up front very easily. You can kind of put your bunny on the back and its back and do exactly what this person's doing, just kind of spreading those cheeks, and you can get a good visualization of those molars and kind of the gum tissue around. It should look nice and pink, it should look very symmetrical, those teeth should be coming together nicely. When they're here in the hospital, this is this rabbit is actually under anesthesia because there's no rabbit that would ever let you put all of that on his mouth and sit there for a picture. Um, so what you'll notice is you have your incisors up here, but then way back here, those, those are the actual molars that we're looking at in the back of the mouth. Those are just the top molars and they, there's bottom ones down here too that you can't see unfortunately in this picture. But in this nice little diagram, you have your incisors, then you have this huge space, and then you actually have your molars. So you can see how their cheeks actually kind of come up to like right here. <laughs> so there's all this in the back of the mouth that's completely obscured to your view and you're not going to be able to see. But you may have an indication that something is going on abnormally in that mouth by the first thing being drooling. Of course there's other things to be looking out for as well that could indicate there's something abnormal going on in that mouth. And the biggest next thing to be really looking out for is that particular rabbit's eating habits. Is it eating less than it used to? Is it being picky from what it used to? 
rabbits, when they start to have pain in their mouth because those teeth are constantly growing and they're not getting ground down appropriately, or if they're not getting down ground, ground down appropriately, I should say, and those teeth start to grow abnormally, they can actually grow to the point where they start poking the gums or poking the tongue. And they can even get to the point where they actually cut the, the tongue or even cut the gums. And that can be extremely painful. I mean, I, you guys can imagine yourself if you had like a huge cut in your mouth, you probably wouldn't want to eat certain things. Well, that's what happens with our rabbits, is they may start to be really selective and a lot of them will stop going for the hay first because the hay is this nice crunchy thing and that hurts to, to be chewing up this crunchy stuff and so they tend to be sometimes more selective and go for those soft easy things to eat like maybe the pellets or the, the greens. But I mean then you have rabbits that don't read the book and they'll just stop with their greens or their pellets and they'll only eat their hay so it's really being you know a little bit of a detective at home and watching them to see are you being funny at all with with selection of which foods it is that you're eating. And if you are being, you know, selective of foods, that may be an indicator that, yeah, something's going on in that mouth. That mouth might be painful and they need to come into the hospital and have us actually examine those molars and see if there's anything wrong with them. Okay, so moving along with our physical exam, we've examined our head and now we're gonna move back along the body of our rabbit. So really, as I'm feeling along the rabbit's body, I'm basically feeling them all over. I'm kind of starting at that neck and kind of massaging around the neck, massaging around the shoulders, because they do have little lymph nodes by their neck, by their shoulders. They're very, very difficult to feel. So I don't ever expect anybody to feel it, but if you were to feel like a lump or a bump, that could be a lymph node that's big, or it could be something else. And so really it's just trying to feel around and see, do I feel any weird lumps? Do I feel any weird bumps in places? where I feel bump over here, but not over here, you know? And so you're just moving over your, your rabbit's body. You're feeling for any swellings, you're feeling for heat as well. When you go to those limbs, I always like to kind of start off on the shoulders, feel around those shoulders, and work my way down that entire limb. And I'm, again, just feeling for lumps, bumps, heat, swelling. I'm feeling, doing like a little bit of gentle pressure on are they acting painful? Are they pulling back from me when I'm pushing on their limbs a little bit? Do they act like, you know, it's just really upsetting for me to touch a particular location? Now the thing is, is that sometimes a rabbit just doesn't want to be touched, and that's okay. So in order for us to identify if that rabbit is just annoyed with us and they're just pulling back because I just don't want to be touched right now versus if it's something actually really hurts and that's why I'm pulling back, it's going back and repeating. Is it if you know you push a particular area and he repetitively pulls back, okay, that could potentially be a painful spot. And then you go to your other limb and you do the exact same thing, feeling all over it, gentle pressure in different locations. And you're going, you know, putting pressure over the bones, but you're also putting pressure over the joints and even doing a little bit of flexion and extension of those joints to see are they acting at all painful. And if you have a rabbit who, you know, you're moving one limb and it's totally fine and it doesn't care, but then you go to another limb and it really starts to, to act like, hey, I'm really annoyed by you doing that and it's a repetitive thing. That could be an indication that something is abnormal there and they need to be checked out for that. Um, look at the fur to see if there's any abnormal shedding, flaking of the, the, you know, like dandruff kind of around their fur, any spots of hair loss. You can also kind of part the fur. And the way that I like to part the fur on a rabbit is I basically kind of start off on the rump back here and I just take my thumbs and I push up along the, the hair. And I work my way up their body because that's a really good way to actually, rather than me having to part through like all these different spots on their body, I can kind of, you know, a uh, little bit more quickly get through that hair, get that hair pushed up so that I can see the skin below. Um, and I'm looking at the skin for any redness, I'm looking for any cuts, I'm looking for any flaking at the, the base of the, the fur, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing that I put, I, so I have an arrow up here for the front limbs, well you're doing the exact same thing for the hind limbs when you're feeling the front limbs, but I also wrote that you want to look at the bunny overall and look at its posture. Is it holding its feet underneath its body and kind of propping itself up appropriately? Or does it, you know, lean to the side? Does it splay a leg out? That sort of thing. Um, you know, does it, when it walks around, does it actually hop? And, you know, with each hop, very purposefully hop around? Or does it hop around kind of like it's drunk and its back end is really weak or its front end is weak? Or the other thing when you're watching them walk around is, do they um, actually hop and put their feet, the bottom of their feet, 
appropriately on the floor? Do they place it appropriately? Or do they, when they hop, they knuckle over? If they're knuckling over and they're dragging their little toes and they're not able to appropriately place their toes, then that can be an indication that we may have some sort of neurological issue going on. So. All right, I know this is not a rabbit. <laughs> but, but I thought it was, it's a, it's a very good um, picture for, for how to assess dehydration in, in a rabbit, in, in, in any animal, actually. So when we're looking at animals and we're trying to say, are they well hydrated or are they under hydrated? What we do is we actually pinch the skin between the shoulder blades. And so you pinch that skin up, as this guy is doing in this picture very nicely. And when he lets this little flap of skin go, if it goes back into place really quickly and rapidly, that animal is well hydrated. Versus if he lets that little piece of skin go and that little piece of skin stays up, that animal is severely dehydrated. If it stays up but kind of slowly goes down, then they're like moderately dehydrated. Or if he lets it go and it, it goes down but it takes a moment, then that's mildly dehydrated. So it's a, it's a very easy place to assess. So I don't always tell people what I'm doing when I'm actually doing that in the room, and I sometimes wonder if people think I'm just pinching their animal just for fun, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, to see is this animal actually hydrated appropriately, and it's a very quick, easy thing for you to do at home. And yeah, if that skin is staying up in place, like if he moved his hand and that skin was just hanging out up there, that animal's extremely dehydrated. That's an animal that needs to be seen. And dehydration can happen for so many, so many different reasons. So it's something that they really should be seeing when you see something like that because so many different things could be, could be causing it. If they're a healthy animal and they just didn't drink water for a while, then it can be several hours. You know, they can go without drinking for like eight, ten hours, they're fine. Even longer than that a little bit and they're fine. Um, but if you have an animal that has some underlying disease process, such as like kidney disease, liver disease, the body, the liver and the, the, the kidneys are really important for kind of maintaining hydration. And if they're not functioning well, then that animal is going to not be able to stay as hydrated. That animal is going to involuntarily be producing a lot of urine and the, the animal may want to be really well hydrated. It can't be because its body just simply isn't functioning well. So those particular animals can become dehydrated rather rapidly. So an animal, and we don't see, you know, when we talk about liver disease, kidney disease in rabbits, um, kidney disease seems to be the more common issue that we will see, like in an older rabbit, um, that will cause dehydration. And so those guys, we're always, always talking with owners when they have a rabbit that has kidney disease that we need to stay on top of their hydration because they just can become dehydrated in a, a matter of a few hours. Um, the smaller the rabbit, the more amount they need per kilogram of body weight. And so when I talk to people specifically about their individual animal, I'll tell them this is how much your animal needs. So for example, if you have a one kilogram rabbit, then they end up needing about 60 milliliters of water per day as their maintenance amount of water. But if you have an animal that has something like kidney disease or liver disease going on, that and their body just can't, leave, can't not uh, keep water on board, you know, they're just peeing everything out, their need for water is going to be a lot greater. They're going to be up to like 120 milliliters per kilogram of body weight a day, you know? So it really depends on if you have a healthy animal versus some disease process going on. It also depends on the size of the animal. If you do have an, a rabbit that does drink a lot, I always say good to have them checked out and have blood work checked just to make sure everything's functioning okay. Because there certainly are behavioral water drinkers out there. I have one myself who just, you know, I've done a lot of work up to try and figure out why you're drinking so much and it's truly she just likes to drink a lot of water <laughs> you know that's just her it's just kind of her behavior um well it depends on the, the kind of medication that they're on and, and and liver disease and kidney disease there are many different things that can go wrong with those particular organs and so medications are going to be directed towards what we're kind of seeing on blood work for that particular animal and where one rabbit may have kidney disease and only need some fluids Another rabbit could have more severe kidney disease and need several medications to kind of maintain their body functioning normally. Um, so, but with liver and kidney, and kidney disease really in particular, the number one treatment is keeping them hydrated. 
because when the kidneys are not, when the body is not hydrated well, the kidneys are not hydrated well. When the kidneys are not hydrated well, the kidneys are really important for excreting toxins. And if they can't excrete those toxins, those toxins build up in the body, and then they make the animals feel sick. You know, then they, the animal physically just does not feel well. So.